Hello Future Scientists, my name is Kaylee and I'm back again today with another edition of our Future Scientist Storytime. Today we are going to be reading Germs by Ross Collins. I hope you guys enjoy, let's go ahead and get started. Pox heard nurse coming before she arrived. Incubating time's up, chicken pox 12087-2, she yelled. Time you learn how to be a proper germ. My friends call me Pox, Pox said smiling. I'm not your friend, snarled nurse. Now pack your bags. Later that morning, the bubonic bus arrived to take Pox and the other cadets to Germ Academy, where minor infections are turned into real germs. Once Pox had passed his physical to prove that he was unhealthy, he was shown to the dorm where he met his new roommates. After lights out, the other germs gathered around Pox to tell stories. Each boasted of a terrible outbreak which a relative had started. But didn't it make the children miserable, asked Pox. That's the point, you numpty, sneered Scab. But Pox didn't get it. For the next week, Pox came bottom of his class in everything. Know your host, medicine self-defense, flight school. All too soon, Pox was assigned his first mission. But she looks so sweet, said Pox. Make her sick, growled Puss. That night, Pox was airdropped outside Myrtle's house and managed to remember enough of his flight training to glide successfully up her left nostril. Pox slumped against a vein and sulked. This job stinks, he thought. What right have I to? But then he heard a noise, getting louder and louder and heading right for him. Inside Myrtle, Pox was surrounded. It was Myrtle's immune system and they didn't look friendly. There he is, shouted one. You picked the wrong kid to infect, yelled another. Meanwhile, back at Germ Central, alarms began to ring. The target isn't showing signs of infection, barked Commander Flem. Chickenpox 12087-2 has loused up his mission. Let us go in, sir, sneered Pox's roommates. We'll give her a birthday she'll never forget, sir. My brave boys, hacked the commander. Pox was in trouble. The immune system was trained to pulverize little germs like him. Wait, he shouted, I'm on your side. Oh yeah, and I'm a fungal infection, mocked a voice at the back. What, why should we trust you, germ boy, scowled another. Because four big ugly germs will be coming soon, said Pox, and without my help Myrtle could be sick in bed for weeks. The army paused. Okay, they said, what do we do? Pox drew up a plan. With seconds to spare, Pox gave the command and a startled Myrtle let rip the biggest sneeze of her life. Achoo! Dazed and confused, the germs woke up a minute later. Rash looked around. Look, he said, we made it, we're in. They all cheered. Let's go infect this little girl, cried Puss. They all cheered again. What's that noise coming down the tunnel, asked Scab. Grrr, I don't think we're in Myrtle, gulp snot. Three cheers for Pox, cried the immune system. Pox was hoisted up on shoulders and taken on a triumphant tour of Myrtle. Crowds of cells cheered the germ who had saved them all. We've never met a heroic germ before, they said. Neither have I, said Pox. What can we ever do to repay you? Well, said Pox, I do need a place to stay. Thanks to his germ knowledge, Pox was made honorary chief of the immune system. As for Myrtle, haven't you heard? Well, she became Mighty Myrtle, the girl who is never sick. But that's another story. Thank you all so much for tuning in. To all the kids out there, let us know what your favorite part of the story was down in the comments below. To all the parents and adult family members, stay tuned to our social media channels for more virtual science and details about the reopening of the Science Center. Please stay smart and safe, and we'll see you all again soon. Bye! 
Hey everybody, Christian here. Just want to thank you guys for watching our content. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button down below. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to our channel for more awesome science experiments coming your way. We want to thank everyone that has been able to give us a donation through these tough times. These donations are critical in helping us bring science and entertainment into your home. So again, we thank you for that. If you enjoy what we're doing, please consider making a donation. One dollar, five dollars, any amount will help us continue our mission to open every mind to science.